So welcome back folks to another FIFA 09 feature video, really excited to get stuck into this one. For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Ash or Brommer18, welcome along, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and ring the bell to get notifications every time I upload. We are going through retro FIFAs at this moment in time. And part of that is we are looking through FIFA 09. This is the first one we've done. I've already done a couple of videos on this so far. So do go and check them out first where we do the kind of deep dive of the entire FIFA 09. We also looked at the manager slash career mode as well. And it has just been so much fun. Today, we've got something a little bit different. In my original video for FIFA 09, covering it and going into it, I have to say I was absolutely blown away by the custom tactics and I made a prediction that perhaps the custom tactics in FIFA 09 are better, more detailed, and more handy than what they are in FIFA 23. And that is pretty significant considering we're now 15 years down the line. And for the technology to have advanced that far, but for the game to have regressed would be pretty big indeed. So what we're going to look to do today is we are going to go through the custom tactics menus and decide definitively whether or not they are better or worse on FIFA 09 because there are some things that really blew me away. So we're going to use Classic 11 for this detail breakdown. I forgot to mention that in the initial kind of FIFA 09 video. Remember when we used to have Classic 11 and World 11 on FIFA? That was so cool. Some incredible players in here. Let's have a look through the likes of Gascoigne and Zico, Berezi, Beckenbauer, Haji and Cantona are on there. Really, really cool. Uh, and I don't know why they got rid of that, really, considering they have the icons in there now, so they could just do it. Um, but nevertheless, we have first things first, obviously the squad. And then if we go into the formations, this is where things really started to get very good. So we'll go for a 4-3-3 here. And as you can see, I can click edit. So we'll click on edit. And what this first allows us to do is adjust players' positions, which obviously we can do in FIFA. So for example, with the right back here, we can go player base position. We can move this up. And rather than be a right back, he's now a right wing back. Very simple. However, things start to get better after there. Player work rate. Rather than having pre-designed and predetermined work rates on FIFA 09, you could actually decide that for yourself. So if we click on player work rate here, they can actually set how frequently you want this player to make runs going forward, how high you want his attacking work rate, so low, medium, or high. And you can also do that for defense as well. That's absolutely incredible. When I first found that, that absolutely blew me away. I could not believe that fact. So for example, if you want this ultra attacking general modern fullback, you can have him on high high. But over on the other side, if you wanted someone who's more of an inverted fullback, he's going to stay back. You could have his defensive work rate on high and his attacking work rate on low. Now, as I was saying, I was absolutely blown away by that. And it, it just really gets good because ultimately you can do it with everyone. Say, for example, we get the right winger. You want him to stay forward. You can have his attacking work rate on high, but his defensive work rate on low. And it also works with getting more movement just in the forward areas, the opposition's half. Unlike what we can do on, on FIFA 23, that just, this just isn't a thing. Perhaps even better than that though is the next one. If you click on the player and click on player positioning, you can actually tweak his formation depending on whether you're in or out of possession. So you can have fluid formations, something that we've had on Pez for many, many years. And I have been absolutely calling to the heavens to have this feature in FIFA, but we don't. Why do we not have fluid formations? But in this, we have it. So you can set his position in attack. When you're in possession, say you want him to be a cam, for instance, you can move that forward. Whereas if you want kind of in defense, him to kind of get back, play more of a holding role, you can do that as well. And that is essentially fluid formations and something that we just don't have in FIFA. But what this also allows you to do is not only that, it also gives you a chance to alter the positioning for a player. So for example, let's say with someone like the right back, for instance, we've spoken often about kind of inverted fullbacks. Well, you can get that in attack, in possession, you can get him to go on the inside and that will work fine. And that is incredible. You can adjust their kind of positioning to create different roles as well as having that fluid formation. Now, all of this can be done. What you can do is when you back out, you can save this to a custom slot so you can load this up on any team. 
which is incredible because we can't do that on FIFA 23. As you'll see, there's a 451 custom here. That's from my first FIFA 9 video I did where I set the kind of Carlo Ancelotti Christmas tree formation with AC Milan. And now I can load that up for any team and we can just get that going there nice and easy. So the majority of these things are things that FIFA 23 doesn't have. Um, now, what I will say is obviously FIFA 23 does have the player instructions and some of them can be very, very good. However, with the likes of, say, for example, the player positioning, when you compare that to the player instructions on FIFA 23, you can have cut inside for their runs. You can have come short, etc. get in behind. You can kind of do that with this player positioning. So that's really more of a basic way to do that, except it also gives you the chance to do fluid formations as well. Another thing I noticed that you can also do is you can set a centre back to sweeper. So you can actually get him to drop behind the defensive line and sweep up the balls. Obviously, more of a traditional older role. You don't see that very often, but it is a role that can still be replicated. And it's really nice to have that, something that we don't have in FIFA 23, particularly when I'm looking to create custom classic tactics and we can't replicate that role. Next, let's have a look at the custom tactics. This was new for FIFA 09. And so you can kind of set this to the kind of custom formation or lineup that you're using. So in this case, we'll go for the classic 11. You can set the speed of the build up. So we've kind of got that already with build up. You can have fast build up, you can have slow build up. And this really allows you to dictate it. The difference is that you get more control over this because you have a, a number to it and you can really pinpoint and get that accurately. Same with the passing in the sense that you can get your players to be on slow build up. However, what you can do here, what you can't do in FIFA 23 is you could have players coming short, but still have kind of a quick build up. So if I want a kind of short possessional base system, we could have that on 10, but then we could have the speed of the build up to be on 80 and it'll be really fast. So players are going to quickly get to that position to support the man in possession, get the ball up forward. So whilst you're playing it short, you can play it quickly as well. That's something you can't do in FIFA 23. You have to either have slow build up or fast build up. You can't have a bit of both. You can also change this to positioning, organized or free form. Do you want players to stay within the tactical shape and their positions? Or do you want players to be able to kind of pop off, drop into pockets as well? Again, something you can't do in FIFA 23. With the chance creation, you get the separate kind of sliders here for passing when you get into the opponent's half compared to when you get into your half. So maybe, for example, when you're building it, you want to play short, but then when you get into the opponent's half, you're then looking to go a bit more direct. You, you're happy to take more risks. In that case, you can do that. You can upgrade the passing and make it more risky and play kind of longer balls. Crossing, you can also do as well. And what this is really going to do is it's going to dictate how many players are getting into the box. So again, we've kind of got that in FIFA 23 already, um, but that's just a kind of older version of being able to replicate that. You've also got this very interesting slider as well, which is called shooting. Now you can be changed between little, normal, and then lots. And what this does is it takes the positioning of the players around the 18 yard box. So for example, if you've got shooting on lots, you'll find players getting into positions to get onto the rebound or show for the ball in order to get into a shooting position. If you've got this on little, what you'll find is players are more likely to show for the pass even when you're in the 18 yard box. They're gonna really close down to the ball and not expect the shot. They're gonna expect you to try and work it into the box. Again, something we don't have in FIFA 23, but really does change the complexion of the way in which you attack on FIFA 09. We've also got the positioning in the opposition's half as well, so you can change this to free form or organize more of a overall arching way to set kind of the positions of player instructions that you would get in FIFA 23. Not quite as obviously detailed as that, but a really good option to have. Defensively, we have got pressure, which obviously we do kind of have that in FIFA 23 already. We have the relentless constant pressure. We have kind of press after possession loss and a pressure on heavy touch. I would say this is a less detailed way of doing that, but doing it in a number really does kind of dictate when they kind of instigate their press, which is something you can't do in FIFA 23. So both of them really have their pros and cons in this case. Next one with aggression is a really good one. It dictates kind of how many players are going to press the ball and how aggressive they're going to be with that press. So for example, we're going to push this all the way up to 100. And what you'll find is then going to change to double. And that means that when you have got a player on a ball who's in a, a position to be pressed, you can then 
double up on him with that pressure and that's something really really good that we don't have in FIFA 23 team whip we of course have and that's very very natural something they removed for a fair while but they have of course brought back now and then defend the line we've either got offside trap or cover and that's really going to be able to dictate how high your line is now something that we already kind of have in FIFA 23 to a greater extent with the depth of the defensive line and the block overall because you can have that between 1 and 100 um, so this isn't as detailed as that but it does still kind of do the job when you compare it with the pressure and the aggression sliders another thing is remember when they made a big deal about adding the game plans to the custom tactics well they were already in in fifa 09 here we have the quick tactics you can change them on the d-pad say for example if i want to switch to a different formation i can click this one we'll set it to custom one milan and when i press right on the d-pad we're going to be able to change to that in game perfect again helps with fluid formations helps with being able to adapt in game and it's what those game plans are effectively and finally there is this one which i have no idea why this was removed from fifa i suspect it's because of the tweet to the frostbite engine and the fact that it, it just isn't very good we have man marking and what this is going to enable you to do is what it says in the team basically we can in each individual game we can set someone to man mark someone else so in this case we'll get beckenbauer and we'll get him to man mark Lionel messi nice and easy and that is something that it's frustrating to me that it isn't in the game, but it's I don't really know why. If we want an ultra man-to-man -man system, like a kind of Bielsa system, we can really go through these guys and, and, and man up everyone and anyone who we can see, really. And that would be absolutely brilliant to be able to do something you can't do in FIFA 23. And it just kind of shows how it has regressed. Now, if I have a look at this, there are a couple of things, of course, in FIFA 23 that this does have over fifa 09 for example the player instructions is a is a big issue that we don't have in fifa 09 that's a big thing and it's very important to still have that even though you do have kind of substitutes in fifa 09 for that and alternatives not quite the same you also get a little bit more control over set pieces as well because ultimately you can choose to have kind of how many players in the box for corners of free kicks having said that i do believe there is a set piece taker and creator for fifa 09 which will enable you to kind of do your own routines other than that though i look at this and i think this is way ahead of what fifa 23 has in every regard and i know already that they do work more effectively than what they do in fifa 23 in game how many times do we see things that just don't work in fifa 23 that we set the tactics for example inverted as a fullback doesn't work join the attack as a center back or overlap doesn't really work sweep a keeper as a goalkeeper doesn't work man marking for these central defensive midfielders only works outside of the 18 yard box after that opposition runners will run free into your box whereas on this we have a, a range of things that not only work but fifa 23 just doesn't have the likes of the positioning the organized and, and free roam positioning of shooting consistency crossing consistency etc being able to alternate and dictate the speed in both halves but still having it whether you want kind of short or longer distribution and mixing and matching with that the freedom to be able to do that and most of all being able to have this player work rate absolutely huge dictating the player work rate for every player is something they really should not have removed i cannot believe they got rid of that because that is so so cool the player positioning as well enabling you to kind of not only get fluid formations to some degree but also to affect kind of the hybrid positioning and being able to create hybrid positions in the first place is something even 23 it's just nowhere near nowhere near that level so all in all i have to say that this for me is is beyond what fifa 23 has and that is really really poor um and ultimately i don't know what they were what they what they're doing really why have we not got a lot of these features while they're being removed from the game who knows only ea do um but i want to know what you guys think let me know in the comment section down below do you remember kind of much of fifa 9 has this video kind of made you want to go back and reminisce and experiment with the past fifas and fifa 9 in particular um and what do you think with regards to the tactics do you think it is better in fifa 9 compared to fifa 23 um and generally the game as a whole let me know in the comment section down below and i will do my best to get back to you 
make sure to check out my patreon the link to that is also in the description great way to support the channel and get fantastic perks as well on top of that such as exclusive tactics videos uh, my FIFA 23 tactics package with rankings and ratings of every system we cover on the channel as well as discord server access fantasy football access behind the scenes videos and a whole lot more drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed it i want to see more and until the next video thank you so much for watching and i will see you soon